Hi everybody, Mark here from Pond Algae Solutions and this week I want to talk about something that one of our readers and I had corresponded on. Uh, it's an important topic because for better or worse, many large pond owners still use copper-based algaecides to take care of their algae problems. And we've talked at length, I think, in, in a number of ways, videos and in, in articles about some of the problems with algaecides, some of the risks involved. <clears throat> in this particular story, it, it kind of comes with a sad ending because this gentleman had a, a beautiful trout pond, beautiful trout that he'd been nurturing over a period of years, uh, developed an algae problem, used a copper product to treat that. And unfortunately, trout are a very sensitive species. They're very sensitive to low oxygen, and they're very sensitive to copper. And unfortunately, he lost many of them in that process. And so he's rebuilding and wanting to start again and, and learned a few lessons along the way. But I want to talk about uh, uh, copper-based products for a second because I think that it's important to use them in the right way to, one, ensure that they're used safely, but also uh, so that they don't make uh, the problem much worse in your pond in terms of algae and toxicity and all this other stuff. So initially, uh, when we talk about any quick kill product, any algaecide, we want to discuss the idea that if we have a very massive algae bloom or any time we're treating uh, algae chemically, we want to make sure that we have very good aeration. Got to have good aeration because as plants die off, they'll pull oxygen from the water. So when you treat a large bloom of algae and you kill off a lot of it at one time, you really do risk depleting oxygen in a pond and thereby hurting the fish dramatically. So aeration will help, but the other step is to make sure that you only treat sections of the pond at a time in the initial dosage to knock it all out. Now, we know that when you do that, obviously, the algae is going to die off and sink to the bottom. And it's really important to minimize this, this from happening. And so my personal opinion is that if you're determined to use a, a copper-based algaecide to treat your algae problems, do so in a way that does not allow the algae to regrow. Don't wait for the algae to show up again in some form or mass and then treat it and then kill it and then have it sink. Try to be more uh, preventative with it um, rather than uh, you know waiting and then responding. Uh, this usually will minimize the buildup in the pond, which is, is really detrimental to a lot of things, but primarily it's going to create more organic loading at the bottom, which will feed more algae growth. And anything you can do to minimize that, the better. Now, for those of you who have, have been readers of ours for a while, you probably know that at PondsAlgaeSolutions.com, we have never sold Qtrin, which is a copper-based product. We have never sold copper sulfate which has long been used for algae control. And there's some reasons for that. One is I think that they generally take a pond in a bad direction and, and there's no good alternatives uh, where they're concerned. You might use them for spot control, that's true, but ultimately uh, we've just never been comfortable that they've worked. And um, I'm happy to tell you that there is a new product that we've just added to the site. It's a new copper-based algae site. It's the only one that we have on there that we believe is safer for many reasons. One, it uses a very low dose of copper in comparison. And, and two, um, because of the way that it's structured, um, it's very light in terms of its buoyancy. So it stays suspended in the water column indefinitely, meaning that it's available to be used and is based on biological demand. When algae is present, it's there to get absorbed by the plant. It will kill it. and and you end up with no algae. Now the way to use this product, and you'll find it on our website, it's called Earth Tech. We've just added it to the website. The way to use this is just as I've described. You ideally use it as a deterrent to new growth. And you maintain a, a relatively low copper, uh, parts per million of copper in the pond in an ongoing basis. And uh, this is much safer for any biological activity that must take place on the bottom for muck reduction and those kind of things. But also, you get a, you get to a certain level. It's usually about 0 0.06 parts per million in copper density, and this will retard any new algae growth from coming along. And so you're using it to keep algae from forming, and thereby you're minimizing any buildup on the bottom and all that good stuff. And uh, so we're excited about this. Now, it, keep in mind that a copper-based algaecide is still not my preferred first line of defense. But I realize, and I'm also realistic, that many people have used copper-based products over the years to at least good results in their opinion. 
And uh, what we're looking to do is simply say, hey, there is a safer and a better alternative than copper sulfate and then cutrin, and here it is. If you use it the way we tell you, and if it's used as directed, it can probably save you money. Cut down on the use of chemicals in your pond, which is totally good. Cupper, cu cut down on the level of copper uh, used in your pond, which also is very good, and uh, allow you to continue to let the biological processes in the pond work as they're designed to do with less impediment from uh, any toxicity from copper. So all in all, uh, we think it's a great offering, a great product to look at, uh, particularly if you are uh, using copper products in your pond right now. This is probably the best of the kind and the safest that we know of. And so we'd urge you to take a look at the Earth Tech product. And with any of these uh, algicides, be sure to follow the directions that we pointed out in the beginning, which is apply them uh, prudently, apply them carefully, have good aeration running when you can, spot treat areas and knock out sections of a time if the algae is very prolific. And once you get it cleared, then establish a maintenance dose. If bacteria has not proven effective for you for some reason, try to establish a maintenance dose and keep the pond clean that way and you'll, you'll create a much better pond environment overall. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, you can uh, email us uh, through our site, pondalgiesolutions.com. And uh, we look forward to talking with you again soon. Enjoy your pond.